This is Rascal. She threw out the Appalachian Trail in 2019, the Pacific Crest Trail in 2022, and the Continental Divide Trail in 2023, making her a triple crowner. I'm going to ask her some questions that you guys submitted to me. If at any point you are charmed by Rascal herself, feel free to gently underhand toss me a like, comment, or subscription. Now, let's get weird with a triple crown through hiker. Rascal, what's the weirdest trail name you've encountered on the three through hikes that you've done? Okay. <laughs> Explain uh, what that is, and also, like, since I probably had to bleep some of that out, can you also explain it in appropriate terms? Do you want me to explain what the actual thing is, or where the trail name comes from? Because those are two no. different things. <laughs> trail name. I met this guy in the middle of the Shenandoahs on the AT, um, and he was hiking with his cat. So that's where this name comes from. Um, he and his cat, his cat would hike about two miles every day, and then he would pick up the cat and put it in his shirt like a pocket, AKA. We we met this same person right before we went into Waynesboro. Did you really? Yeah. Did you set out to do all three from the onset, or just do one and then get hooked from there? I set out just to do the one. From the beginning, I actually had no idea, or I could not really fathom even making it the entire way on the first trail I did at AT. Didn't know much about the PCT besides I read the book Wild before and was like, oh, that sounds cool. And then I knew absolutely nothing about the CDT. When I started learning about it, I was like, nope, never doing that. 200 miles into hiking the AT. So you're like, that's where you get to Klingman's Dome. Uh, I remember me and the group I was hiking with, we woke up at like, I don't know, 3 a.m. and started hiking so we could catch sunrise as we got up to Klingman's Dome. And it was a beautiful, clear morning and sunrise was coming up. And then my brain just said, hey, guess what? This is your life now. And not only are you going to make it to Katahdin on the AT, but eventually you're going to do the PCT. And who knows, maybe one day you'll even do the CDT. Most of the PCT, I was like, nah, screw the CDT. I don't know. But then as I kept going, I was like, nah, I get it. The rule is you either do one or you do all three. Is there a difference between hikers between the three trails, for example, this is a specific question from somebody. They say, for example, are CDT hikers different from AT hikers, or is there a similar vibe between them all? They are three very different trails. The AT is like seen as the beginner trail just because logistically it's so easy and it's so accessible. So you get people from every walk of life and it is crowded. PCT is like kind of like the next step up, in my opinion, of like, if you get hit with bad weather, you might be screwed. Um, and then the CDT is like, eh, there's a couple chances you are, you are going to be put in really sketchy situations. So that draws different types of people. There's definitely like a factor of elitism more on the PCT and especially on the CDT because there's fewer and fewer people, and those are the people who have done more miles along different trails. So they're not, usually, they're not newbies. But they kind of have this confidence that maybe comes off not super great. When, I, when me, Jonathan, and Reese were on the John Muir Trail going, um, going south, and the mm -hmm. PC Tears were going north, no one said hi. No one looked our way. No one paid any mind. I was like, cool. We're I remember I stopped to talk to some people and they just like basically ignore me. We're just nice and said a couple words, but basically ignore me. I was like, cool. Great. Thanks. Great yeah. talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I think it's really hard because on all three of the big trails, there's also three smaller trails mm. in them. There's the long trail on the AT. There's the Colorado trail on the CDT and there's the John Muir trail on the PCT. And so those hikers, may be more experienced who knows than like the ones who are doing the longer ones but the ones who are doing the longer ones are like yeah i got more miles like going on so you know whatever i'm cool and you're like well sure you are cool because you're out here too but like 
You never know. Somebody asked specifically, did your buddy Rascal get a sense of fulfillment? Yeah, I mean, definitely. It becomes, in my mind, it's like easier and easier to picture myself like continuing to live this life. So like, why wouldn't I eventually complete this? Um, For me, this is just the beginning. So yes, it is like a level up in my fulfillment, but I'm always striving for more and creating more silly, insane goals for myself. So it didn't feel like an end. What gets progressively easier when you hike more trails and what gets harder? Um, the mentality definitely gets easier. I can push myself. I can do crazy things and see if it works out. For me, the fear of failure like kind of dissipates as you get more and more miles under your belt because it's like, I don't know, you have nothing left to prove in a way once you accomplish something so big like that. It's like, Mm. yeah, I mean, why wouldn't I just try, you know, instead of like, oh, I don't think I can do it. So I shouldn't try it. Mm. Um, So for me, yeah, the mentality always gets easier. It's harder to appreciate it more, I think. Mm. because it is just like a part of my life Mm. every every summer for the past five years I've quit my job and put all my stuff in storage and grabbed my backpack and gone and it's like it just has always worked out so I obviously appreciate it insanely because I like structure my life around that to get to go do it but it never feels like a -a once-in-a-lifetime shot anymore but I still appreciate it And I still, because every experience is different. Like every time, even if you do the same exact miles of the exact same trail, like a repeat, you know, it's never going to be the same. The weather's not going to be the exact same. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're not going to be the exact same for sure. Mm -hmm. And then the people you meet out there, they're always going to be different. So that is super helpful in making sure that it is a unique experience every single time. That's a great, that's a great way to see it. I think. Uh, The thing I tend to forget a lot about whenever I'm doing hikes or runs or something is like, I'm never going to be the same person with the same body and the same mentality. Um, And that could be a good or a bad thing, uh, depending on where I am in life. If you had to do it all over again, which order would you do the trails in? I might do, I would do AT first for sure. It's like, it's hard because environment is harder it's harsher it's just like the trail is Mm. not super nicely kept there's a million and ten people out there your weather is going to be pretty iffy no matter what even if it's not raining the whole time it's humid the whole time people like to shit on the at so anytime i've been on other trails people like oh no the at everyone talks shit about it i don't want to be go to that trail (laughs) um but it is the most historic and special trail Mm. in my opinion and then I would probably go do the CDT second because the CDT kicks your ass and if you can survive that thing you can do anything. I think the thing I love the most is that the CDT helped me in the way of encouraging you to get a Garmin inReach one day <laughs> to purchase one. Because before that, you were so against Garmin inReaches or any kind of safety beacon. And I was always trying to get you to get one. And somehow this experience you had on the CDT has changed that. And I love that. But I also yes. am like a little nervous for what happened out there. At no point on any other trail, any other run, any other hike, anything I'd done in the backcountry had I felt like wow, if I keep pushing myself, I might need a rescue. Like, I'd never felt that before. My experience in the CDT when I got hit with a really bad snowstorm um, in the San Juans, that was the first time ever that I'd been like, wow, if I don't, like, make the right decision here, Mm -hmm. I might actually need a rescue. And if it comes to that, oh, I don't actually have the ability to, like, reach out for help. (laughs) Whoops. It only takes one time to die, you know? Yeah. It's true. And I, I, my number one life, my number one goal in life um, is to never have to be rescued. So, yeah. So, so AT, CD, CDT. AT1, CDT2, which leaves the good old Pacific Crest Trail mm-hmm. for number three, because um, my experience on that trail, my year on that trail, I always describe it as a honeymoon. Mm-hmm. It was like, it's like if you could make a movie, the most perfect movie, 
about a through hike of the PCT and how dreamy and perfect it can be, um, it would be, I would be the star of that movie and my journey would be the whole thing. That sounds amazing. What trail do you think had the majority of women or the more women based on the percentage, I guess, like percentage wise. So like if there's like, you know what I mean? So like more percentage wise of women of through hikers on the PCT compared to the AT or CDT. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And why do you think that is? Why do you think more women are out there on the PCT? And why is it anything against like, for instance, the CDT? Like, what do you think is a barrier for a lot of women to get into the other trails compared to the PCT? Or does the PCT have something that the others don't? So I think the PCT, well, there was the whole wild situation, you know, with freaking shit mm-hmm. trade. But I think a lot of women relate to that or like see that it changed her. And so they run off to the PCT. Also, it's like dreamy, you know, I want to go run along the west coast of mm. course at is a little bit more sketchy you know how everyone's always like oh my god you're out there alone uh, as a female oh my gosh you're not carrying a gun and all those <laughs> silly comments like yeah. i mean the at has so much accessibility mm-hmm. that it, it is the only trail that i've been on where there have been a few times where i've been nervous for my own safety because of other human beings mm-hmm. uh yeah. pct i was never worried about other human beings i was worried more about like exposure yeah and the cdt is like intimidating how would you encourage women um who want to do the cdt like how would you encourage them to get out there even i was intimidated i mean i left for the seat to hike the cdt with a partner like it's the only trail i've ever like started with somebody once you get out there and once you get you know get over the hump and get over that In a way, after even just a few days, it's like, it's like any other trail in a way, as long as you have a little bit of experience. Traveling alone in general, you don't even have to be a female, Mm -hmm. is like not the safest thing. But there are measures and ways you can make it safer. If you want to carry bear spray, you can. It's not necessary, but you can. Um... If you find people that you want to hike with, you can hike with them, you know. What was your katata moment across the three, the time where you felt the most accomplished? It doesn't have to necessarily be the end of the trail. The AT, one of my first katata moments was my very first 20-mile day that I'd ever hiked. Oh, yay. I didn't think it was possible to hike 20 miles in one day. Oh, my. Just cute little baby back then. For some people, that's still not a reality. Like a lot of older hikers that do watch my channel, um, and also my mother, who's still trying to work up to her 20 miles. It is really tough for a lot of people, but it can happen. Rascals think that. It's daunting. I get it. Like it is scary. It's daunting, but like it can't. Like you said, it can happen. You know, regardless of who you are, your physical abilities, your age, whatever. If you work on it, like if you work on it, like your mom's working on it, she's going to do it. That feeling of like accomplishing it, realizing like, wait, do I even have limits? Can I, could I go Mm -hmm. further? Can I do that? Like that was the first moment of me ever getting that feeling when I did that. And I was, that's what really, really just set a tone for the rest of my through hiking and running and outdoor career and life, I guess, in general. PCT. Katahdin moment, loved um, hiking Forester Pass Mm, mm. in the Sierras. Beautiful. Scary? Beautiful? It was scary. Yeah. My buddy Sherpa and I woke up like stupid early and hiked in the snow to get up there by sunrise. We like came up all those switchbacks from the south side and as we're cresting over, like the colors were just like like, Mm. in your face. And it was like, oh my gosh. And we were like hiking in the snow, which was so cool because it was like still newer to me to hike in the snow. But that was just like a feel good moment. I didn't like learn the meaning of life during that or anything. The CDT, there were a lot of moments that were both like Katahdin moments of both like really, really high highs and really, really low lows. Because the CDT tried to break me a lot. 
it was physically, emotionally, spiritually, like the hardest trail I've ever done. When I was in the middle of that really bad snowstorm in the San Juans, and I had been separated from everyone I was hiking with, and I didn't have any communication with anybody, nor did I have any notion of what the weather was going to be. Every single piece of gear I owned was soaking wet. I was freezing cold. I was running out of food. Um, and this moment of like, just like self-confidence in myself of like, well, I know I can handle this right now was like pretty Katahdin moment for me of like feeling that independence and that ability to survive. I like how all three of those are different types of experiences. Like the first one is like, accomplishment the second one is beauty and the third is just like surviving and like realizing like you can do something i guess that's more like victory in a way this is going to be rapid fire with rascal so we're going to go over some quick questions rascal have you seen a ufo on your three adventures on the cdt at and pct um i have not seen one but i have come encounter with extraterrestrials in town silver city new mexico okay I, that was supposed to be rapid fire but i oh. feel like we need, like a little more contact <laughs> are you okay i'm okay yeah it was a it was a weird experience you know you know when you just like you order a dirty chai and then you sit down and then all of a sudden you're surrounded by people who could potentially be extraterrestrials and tell you that Draco is back. Oh. Yeah. It was a whole thing. Yeah, that... I love that for you. You believe in Bigfoot now that you've done a lot of trails. Do you believe in the Bigfoot? Um, about three and a half miles outside of Cascade Locks, just north of it. I actually have a video proof of one of my buddies who um, saw Sasquatch. What? Yeah, he, in the video, he is just doing his thing, walking to the woods, and then oh, he hears my buddy, he looks to the side, he looks back to what he was doing, and he just keeps walking. Do you have that video? Yeah, I do, I show it can, to everybody. Can I put it, I'm gonna put it on the video. Okay, all right, but there's gonna be some skeptical people out there who are gonna be like, nah, that's not real. <laughs> well, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, what are your three favorite pieces of gear from each trail? On the AT, my favorite piece of gear was my chalk bag that I carried. Mm -hmm. um, That most people remember me by. You met me on that trail. It was my thing. PCT, my favorite piece of gear that I carried was my pea cloth, my Kula cloth, specifically from the Kula company. And CDT was my wind pants oh my god my wind pants saved my life and i did end up severely ripping them in san juan's and then they are currently still in use they just have ear tape all over (laughs) and i guess that says something about the trail too in a way like if we look at the first one was your talk bag that was just a fun fun accessory just something you had that helped you carry stuff it was like personalized and everyone was like, oh my God, are you climbing out here? And I'm like, well, I am a climber back home, but no, I just use it to carry snacks in my phone. Yeah. The the second one being the pea cloth. I don't know what that says about the PCT, but maybe, maybe mm-hmm. something, maybe something's in there. And then I love the CDT, how there's just like ripped, <laughs> ripped <laughs> wind pants that helped you survive. The CDT, like oh, the CDT trash. trashed so much of my gear <laughs> this is going to be a really hard one but you have you have to have an answer and i know i i think i already know the answer i think everyone can already guess what they yes be. you're my favorite person i've met along all the trails oh okay. yes that's exactly <laughs> what i was gonna ask and that is so nice of you thank you <laughs> what is the trail that you you can't hike any other trail you have to stick to the one one of these three for the, for rest, the rest of your life <laughs> never 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 going anywhere else. No other trail, just this same one. The CDT? Oh, wow. I thought you would have said the PCT. Well, yes. 
but I don't know. I feel like, I also feel like I left, maybe I don't have all the fulfillment I think I do because I feel like I left something out there in the CDT that I need to go back for. Hmm. For somebody that wants a triple crown, what piece of advice you'd have for that person? Um, besides just do it. Yes. Don't ball out financially. Mm. Every single time you go do something like this. Mm -hmm. Don't party as much as mm. others. Like, yeah, we all drink. We all smoke. We all hang out and yeah. like spend money on things we shouldn't and spend too much time in town once in a while is fine. But if you do that every single town, nah, you're going to... You're going to spend too much and then you're also going to lose focus of like why you're out there and then the miles aren't going to be as enjoyable because you're going to be like come over or yeah you know all right rascal thank you so much for joining me on my channel today if you guys want to follow rascal on her second triple crown you can follow her at her, at her on her instagram uh, Megan Joy 94. All right, we'll talk to you later. Hey, okay, bye.